Hey YouTube, Peter Bill Knife Guy. Today we're going to be talking about 1095 steel. Alright, so we're talking about 1095 steel and we're going to talk about the three American heavy hitters that uh, basically dominate the 1095 market. We got your tops, you got your SEs, and you got your K bars. All in 1095 all with their own differences. Uh, K-Bar uses something called 1095 Crovan. Excuse my dirty fingers, I worked all night. And if that offends you, F off and get out of your mom's basement. <laughs> but yeah, so we got 1095 Crovan. We have just straight up 1095 fully hardened all the way through. And then we have 1095 with a dual heat treat. And by dual heat treat, I mean, it's got a harder edge than a spine and basically they all come with their perks and their flaws and I still do think some are better than others all right so let's talk about the k-bar and crovan 1095 crovan steel these knives are known for being brittle um, they're you know they're strong 1095 is strong but the way K-Bar does it, they just have a tendency to be brittle. I don't know if they're over hardening it. All companies have their own heat treats. And the Crovan really doesn't help it much. It doesn't really change the steel that much or the final product, but it does, I believe it helps in the heat treat process. But whatever they do to these, they make they hold a good edge, but they tend to be chippy. You can go online and you could find a lot of broken. 1095 K-Bar, or 1095 Crovan knives. And something to do with the heat treat. I've seen them where a guy took one of these hunting and chipped it out. He was he was uh, deboning or quartering an elk or something like that, hit a bone and it literally took a silver dollar, like a half of a silver dollar out of the blade. They're not as strong, especially in cold. In cold, they, they're not as strong as they should be or as they could be for being 1095. Up next is your Tops. Now Tops is a fantastic brand. All these are good brands. They're all made in USA, but Tops does something a little different and it's uh, a dual heat treat to where the real hard edge of a blade, you know, uh, when they do the heat treating process is gonna be down towards your cutting edge and then the back is tempered. Now, it does two things in my opinion, one, it's supposed to make a stronger knife, but also it introduces, if it's not done properly, stresses between the different molecule or the different structures of the steel when you got a harder and softer down here. There's a there's a, a point in the middle that just is, uh, it's kind of unhappy. And what happens when you dual quench something, metal wants to contract and expand. So, you know, steel, will increase in size by one thousandth of an inch per hundred degrees. So if you're cooling this down quicker than you're cooling this, you're introducing a lot of stresses into here that, you know, they, they figured it out, but it's questionable in my opinion. And I would just prefer a full hardened blade. And that brings us to SE. All SE knives are a fully hardened blade. It's just as hard up here as it is back here to where this guy is gonna be hard on the cutting edge, everywhere else is gonna be a lot softer. And then these guys are just hard and brittle. <laughs> and out of the three, these are the only ones with skeletonized tangs. There's holes in here that create weak spots. There's been a lot of them that broke. Also brittle steel, I don't know why. Now, for edge retention, I have yet to do an edge retention test on all three, that'd be kind of fun to do actually, but if I have to choose a 1095, I think I would go 100% with a fully hardened heat treated blade versus whatever they do and whatever they do. Like all three brands, but 1095 in my opinion does its best fully heat treated like this. Um, also, I've had a lot of SE products. Everybody craps on 1095 steel. I don't freaking get it. You know, you've got these guys, they'll scrimp and save and buy something like this in 3V, you know, they'll eat Top Ramen for a couple days and uh, 
go by this and they'll never use it. They'll never use it. They won't take it out. They won't do anything with it. They'll go like this on a camera and, you know, talk about the things it'll do and how great it is and blah, blah, blah. Never use it, but then turn around and shit on 1095 because uh, they spent their milk money on one of these, you know? So those guys are idiots. There's a lot of them out there. But in my experience, 1095 is a fantastic steel. Don't let anybody shit on it. It, you know, and that's why still manufacturers still make it. I mean, fuck if Buck made stuff in 1095, I might like them a little bit better because I actually do crap on 420 HC. I just, I think it's not a bad steel. I think it is overpriced for their knives. You know, you want to charge premium freaking prices, but put garbage steel in there, in my opinion. Um, but a good heat treated 1095, I would put 1095 up against freaking uh, 420 HC all day. I don't give a shit what people say. They'll be like, oh, this holds an edge longer. Well, so what? Sharpen it. This is easier to field sharpen. And it's just a better steel in my opinion. Um, but that's also just my opinion. So to each their own, I'm allowed my own. And uh, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching.